Bitcoin finally wakes up and the markets are not too far behind. Let's jump in and take a look at what's going on. A lot of excitement and action in the crypto space. As you can see, Bitcoin really since uh, Tuesday the 17th has been on an upward trajectory all the way up to 35,000 <clears> before finding its final resistance, a 31% gain ultimately for the entire move. But at this point from, well, from the low of this region here of 25,000, currently up about 34% right now and did reject at that 35,000 level, kind of bouncing around in the 33 to 33.7 range. A lot of people getting excited on this candle right here yesterday as news uh, came out that the BlackRock ETF was uh, going to be approved and, you know, any time now, which turned out to be um, not necessarily the case. There's been a lot of excitement with Grayscale case officially being recorded as a win for Grayscale. Doesn't mean that they're automatically going to become an ETF. They still have to go through the approval process, but they did win their case. The SEC dropped its case against um, a couple of the uh, Ripple executives. And uh, yesterday, all of a sudden, there was news that um, BlackRock was setting up their accounts and seeding their fund, which you know every ETF does to get it ready for trading once it's ready to go. So that kind of fed the narrative. A lot of people were thinking that the ETF was going to be approved any minute now with that seeding. And then today on the DTCC, uh, the uh, Grayscale or the uh, BlackRock Bitcoin ETF was listed uh, yesterday and then removed today. So a lot of excitement in the space, a lot going on. The site actually crashed for a while. But as of right now, the listing um, is still not appearing on the website. We don't really know what happened or what's going on. This is all standard, right? So what is the DTCC? The Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation uh, provides industry-leading solutions to safeguard the financial markets. For more than 50 years, they have served as the premier post-trade market infrastructure in the industry. Um, so basically, this is your clearinghouse. Uh, so this is where the ticker symbol gets listed. And uh, like I said, it was listed earlier and then ultimately removed. And uh, other news, the markets are up a little bit today. Dow up 0.62, S&P up 0.7, NASDAQ up 0.9 with mixed earnings coming out. Still waiting on big tech earnings uh, to drop here this week. And uh, that will weigh heavily on the market either way. Positive tech earnings will boost the market. Negative tech earnings will uh, put pressure on the market. Jamie Dimon coming out against the central banks for being 100% dead wrong on economic forecasts, uh, saying that they got inflation wrong. They've always gotten it wrong. Now they're saying no recession and the economy's doing fine. And he thinks that they've got that wrong as well, as he is anticipating uh, a slowdown. He says, whether the whole curve goes up 100 basis points, I would be prepared for it. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I look at what we're seeing today, more like 70s, a lot of spending. A lot of this can be wasted. Uh, you can't build pipelines to reduce coal commissions. You can't get permits to build solar and wind and things like that. So we better get our act together. So citing energy concerns, inflation concerns, central bank policy errors and missteps all along the way. Uh, as we know, the central bank wants to continue to fight inflation. So let's take another uh, look at the markets here. Markets kind of consolidating in entering potential bear market territory if it loses this range here on the Dow, the NASDAQ. Same thing, kind of hanging on to the edge of the cliff here. Let's put some moving averages on this so we can bring a little context to it. Below the 50 and the 100, above the 200 for the NASDAQ, below the 200 on the Dow. S&P playing with the 200 right now. If it loses the 200, generally that's not a good sign for the S&P as we can see in the past. Bitcoin has destroyed the moving averages. We'll take a look at that in a second. Let's take this off. Uh, VIX retracting, uh, coming off of a little bit of spike to 23 when the markets were down. Uh, they've rebounded since. The Dixie kind of getting a little bit of a bounce today, again, ranging in that 106 area. The two-year got a little bounce today after a little bit of a cool-off period. The 10-year, which mortgage rates are largely based on in that 4.8 to 5% range right now, uh, retracting from a high of 5.03%. Uh, back on Friday, I believe it was, Monday or Friday when we hit that. It's probably Monday we hit 5.03%, uh, has rejected from there, 
finding support right here in this 4.8% level, keeping rates at that 7.89 to 8% range for 30-year fixed mortgages, of course. Uh, you can get the rate lower with adjustable rate mortgages, with buy-downs, uh, and all kinds of other um, creative loan products that uh, that they are coming out with to combat high mortgage rates and the unaffordability of housing. Oil retracting just a little bit. Gold uh, retracting, uh, rejecting off that bounce to 1996, almost back to $2,000. But the big news is Bitcoin. So what was this all about? So this was all about the narrative of the ETF getting approved, all the capital going to flood into the market. So we're getting a little taste of what is going to come when the ETFs do get approved, especially when they all get approved at scale. Whether it holds or not, we're definitely going to see a bounce. And I think we're going to see a return to previous all-time highs pretty quick once all the ETFs are approved, because there's going to be just capital flowing into the space and so much excitement behind all of it. Uh, but this was a lot of short liquidations, I think somewhere into, to the tune of about $350 to $400 million of short liquidations right here in a very short period of time, because people were shorting, you know, right into this resistance here, you know, rightfully so. Normally that would be a good short to take. Uh, very worst case right up in this area, Bitcoin just blasted right through that, popped up to the range. What you want to see is Bitcoin hold right now above 30,000, but more specifically above that 31,000 range, which would uh, put these areas uh, of support. Let's go right in here. You want to see this. Uh, I'm sorry. You want to see this area here, this area here this area here, right around that $31,000 range, kind of hold as support as Bitcoin kind of works its way back. You want to see it kind of hold that range and just kind of range in this area, uh, 31 to maybe 35,000 while it's waiting for ETF approval. If Bitcoin loses this range, then you're dropping back down into the area of that 28 to 25,000 range that Bitcoin's been kind of consolidating in, waiting for this little pop here. So uh, what, I, what else I have drawn here are uh, also uh, the, uh, had the Bitcoin halvings drawn in there because price will generally move its way up right before the halving, kind of maybe drop a little bit after the halving and then continue on from there. Uh, the halving is, is right now anticipated to be somewhere around the middle of April, maybe around April 17th. Uh, we can see the altcoins, kind of everything getting a little bit of a boost, pretty much just like Bitcoin did. This is Ethereum uh, with a total move of about 20%. Bitcoin had a bigger move. Litecoin was waking up ahead of all of this. Uh, Litecoin is also retracting ahead of all of this, had about a 21% jump. So Bitcoin had the biggest jump all the way around. XRP, Dogecoin, Solana had a nice little jump here. Uh, Matic, Cardano, pretty much everything following suit. So that, that tells you right there that there was a lot of excitement. The space was waking up, everybody anticipating. But again, a lot of this was just kind of a setup to liquidate a lot of these shorts, knowing that the ETF from the institutional side, market makers, institutional investors, they knew the ETF was not uh, being approved. Although there could have been potentially some behind the scenes insider information being shared on a potential approval. But right now with the listing, delisting, you know, the things that are going on and then some of the... Uh, some of the people in the industry coming out, uh, especially former SEC attorneys, um, you know, with their opinions that uh, that they're not likely to see a, uh, an ETF approval this year, maybe Q1 of next year, because again, one of the biggest issues the ETF approval is facing for Bitcoin is Coinbase uh, with that shared surveillance agreement with the custody um, you know, uh, institution that's going to hold custody of the Bitcoin for the ETF funds they're still in a lawsuit with the SEC. So I don't think that uh, the ETFs are going to get approved while that's ongoing. I think that litigation needs to get resolved before the uh, SEC will sign off on them as a custodian or the party uh, for the shared surveillance agreement, kind of auditing things, making sure uh, that there's no fraud and manipulation, which is one of the biggest concerns that Gary Gensler keeps citing. So these are the things I'm looking at. We'll see you on the next video.